Hello, I'm Randy Siever. This is going to be our final video, Lord willing, on uh, the subject, Did John Piper Recant Calvinism, Leighton Flowers versus Romans Chapter 5? Uh, this is not going to be primarily uh, concerning that subject, but I just want to make a few additional comments about this passage because this passage is often used by those who wish to deny the doctrine of particular redemption because they wish to go to verses 18 and 19 and um, ask the question, does all in one part of the verse mean something different than all in the other part of the verse? And the answer to that question is clearly yes. There is no question that that is the case. I want to read those two verses for you. This is from the New King James uh, I'm not recommending that translation. I find it to be generally faithful. And um, so I I'm using it right now. If you're reading from some newer modern translation, that's fine, as long as it's a translation and not a paraphrase. Um, listen, to the, listen to what Paul writes. Therefore, as by one man's offense, or by the offense of one man, judgment came upon all men, resulting in condemnation... Even so, by the one righteous act of the one man, the free gift came upon all men, resulting in justification of life. Now, please notice that Paul is not talking about the offer of justification to all men. Paul is talking about the accomplishment of justification the actual bringing of justification to the all men who are in view. Who are these all men? And the answer is he is talking about the all men who are in Christ. He's not talking about the all men who are in Adam. All who are in Adam die. So the all in the first part of the verse, judgment came upon all men, talks about the all men who are represented by Adam. The justification that comes on all men is talking about the all men who are represented by Christ. And Paul's entire point in the, in the entire passage is our final justification and glorification is absolutely certain because we are in a new representative. And just as Adam's transgression guaranteed the condemnation of all who were in him, so the work of Christ guarantees, not offers, guarantees the justification of all who are united to him by faith. Some of my colleagues I've heard use the argument that um, we don't believe that Jesus died for everyone because Romans 5.19 says, he died for the many, or he, he represented the many. Um, the problem with that is that in the verse just before it, he talks about the all, and so your argument breaks down. When Paul uses this language, he's talking about re representation. It is the one active, acting in the place of the many, doing for the many what needs to be done. Okay. So when it says Christ died for the many, it doesn't just mean he died for some, although he did, it means he died for all those he represented. It is the one acting in the place of the many, just as Adam, the one man, acted in the place of the many. That's Paul's argument. And again, if you argue, as Mr. Flowers has argued, that um, we are not declared guilty are condemned because of our own transgression, but I'm sorry, because of the transgression of Adam, but because of our own transgression, then number one, God is unfair because he didn't give us a shot to exercise our free will. It seems to be the most important doctrine in their, in their um, armory, I, I guess. Uh, you've got to have free will because if you don't have free will and... Uh, who knows what they mean by free will because it's so hard to get them to define it. Um, we don't deny free will in the sense that everybody's able to do what he desires to do. Choose what he desires to choose. If I want something and I want it more than I want anything else at any given time, I can choose it. My will isn't broken. 
the problem is my will is not autonomous. My will doesn't choose what it wants to will. Can't do that. If that's what they mean by free will, we don't believe in that. We don't, we don't believe in autonomy when it comes to free will. Are we able to make choices? Do we choose freely? Are we autonom automatons or robots or puppets? No. No, 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 no. And yet they want to talk about us believing that God must force us to do... No, God doesn't force us to do anything. If I choose Christ, I choose him because I want to choose him. Right? But they seem to have to have that um, free will governs everything idea. So, so if I don't get to make my choice and damn myself, it's not fair. That's, that's his argument. Um, I, can't, I can't be condemned because of what Adam did. Even though he was in a better position to do what he did, then I, I am to do what I need to do. Imagine that I'm accused of a, a terrible, terrible capital crime. I studied law. I didn't, but in my illustration, I studied law 50 years ago. I haven't picked up a law book since then. Uh, I don't know what the current laws are all about. I've forgotten much, most of what I've learned. And yet, I decide that rather than hiring a lawyer, I think it's going to be better if I go to court and represent myself. Good idea? I don't think so. Because a lawyer is going to be in a far better position to represent me than I'm going to be in to represent myself. Same thing's true. Adam was in a far better position to represent me than I am to represent myself. And so it was the one acting for the many. I can't complain about what he did because if I had to do, be, be subjected to the test in my condition, in my environment, with all the temptation, with the certainty that I was going to fail, I'd be toast. And so would you. So would you. It's not a good idea to accuse God of unfairness, Leighton. You need to find out what God has done and get in line with it. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. If you did, I hope you'll click like, come back to see more of them, if God gives us the grace to do them. And I hope God will use this to help you understand the gospel better. You don't get justified because you enabled by grace, do better, obey, suffer, whatever, improve upon the grace of God until you get to the point that God can justify you. Now, if you're justified, you're justified freely by the grace of God through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You're justified because he acted in your place and did for you what you couldn't do and would never do, left to yourself. May God give you grace to understand that if you're not in Christ. May you rest in him completely. He's your only hope. He represented poor, helpless sinners in his redemptive work. He did for us what we could never do for ourselves. And by the grace of God and through faith, that righteousness of Christ and that penalty that he paid is put to our account so that God can justify us freely by his grace. May God give you grace to believe that so that you can begin to be conformed to the image of Christ who is the image of God. Until next time, may God richly bless you.